Hey everybody, today I'm going to tell you a story. It is more about American history than it is about Japan, although um, generally I'm going to put two dots up and then uh, you're going to decide whether you're going to connect them or not. So let's start, we'll put the first dot right about here. And then we're gonna put another dot about here. And um, hmm. those are a little boring, so let's uh, spice them up a little bit. There we go. Yeah, that's about right. So we're gonna be starting with this dot uh, in the US. And perhaps if you know what the situation is like here in Japan, then maybe you can draw the line between them, but I'm gonna leave that up to you. Uh, and you can have that conversation down in the comment section below. So what I'm going to talk to you today about is a situation that happened in the U.S. primarily around in the 1800s. Um, some of the dates are going to be around 1850 to 1890, although there were examples before uh, 1850, of course, and after the 1900s began, because that's us. So the story I'm going to tell you about the U.S. today is actually uh, it has an acronym called NINA, which is the title of the video. And it talks about no Irish need apply. There were a lot of immigrants coming in from Ireland around this time. And there was, uh, because the U.S. was primarily Protestant at that time, the Irish Catholics uh, were having a hard time getting jobs and finding places to live. And occasionally uh, the conventional wisdom in the Irish community is that there were no Irish need apply signs and newspaper ads all over the place in the newspapers and and things like that so one of the things that happened later on you get researchers looking at that period of time period in history saying well this is just how it felt at the time and there weren't actually any signs and there weren't any uh, newspaper ads about no Irish need apply. It came from this song, which I'll go ahead and link up here, uh, that was popular in the in the early 1900s in the U.S., and that just kind of fueled it. And there was discrimination against the Irish in the U.S., but you know people didn't actually put up signs and stuff. And this theory was espoused by Dr. Richard Jensen, uh, who is at the University of Illinois Chicago. And he said, ah, it's, it's a myth. I mean, there was discrimination, but these signs didn't actually go into windows. It was more a cultural touchstone that the Irish used to get through these difficult times. Well, uh, back in May or so, a young lady named uh, Rebecca Freed, uh, who is 14 at the time, and I believe probably still 14 now, uh, went through Google and did a bunch of Google searches and tapped into a bunch of databases, uh, newspaper databases that went back to the early 1800s, which when Dr. Jensen was getting his degree was not available. So yay technology. She was able to find examples of no Irish need apply signs in stores and lots of no Irish need apply job application and housing advertisements in the newspapers. And so this young lady was able to put a paper together and have it published, have her findings published in a journal, the Journal of Social History. And this idea of no Irish need apply was kind of not just New York, but all over the states to varying degrees. And probably 1940 or 1843 was the height of it. But uh, you'd have to read her paper actually to see what she has to say about it. But it's really interesting. And there are... And it's not a proud time in American history as far as uh, immigration and stuff goes. There were a lot of problems with discrimination and uh, situations that just weren't right. It's an interesting phenomenon. It's interesting that a 14-year-old girl that would be able to get onto the internet and find resources that were unavailable even 40 years ago, 50 years ago, and would be able to put together a scholarly paper and get published in a scholarly journal that is peer-reviewed. Good honor. Yay. But it's also remarkable that this phenomena has kind of been mythologized and has been pushed aside and, oh, it didn't actually happen. It's just a metaphor for what the Irish people were thinking at the time in the U.S. And I don't know if you can draw the line from this dot down here 
to that one up there. Uh, what do you think the connection could be? And with that, I'm going to leave you today. I'd like to say thank you very much to everyone who came to the YouTube party. And also, uh, if you who are watching this now could thumb this up and pass it along, I'd like to get this out a little bit farther than I usually do. Uh, so any thumbs up you could give me would be greatly appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe and all that stuff on the end screen that's going to be coming up any second now. I'll talk to you later. Bye.